This is my country, overflowing with nature's bounty. Crisscrossed by innumerable rivers and canals, Bangladesh's fertile soil is famous for its high productivity. And these are my people, simple, peace-loving and hard-working. Since the time immemorial, they loved poems and hated wars. Generous and hospitable, they always showed great faith in universal humanism. Yet in sharp contrast, this nation has been most unfortunate. For ages, its people suffered all forms of exploitation. For centuries, Blood dripped ceaselessly from their wounded hearts. After 200 years of British colonialism, in 1947, India was granted independence and this land was made a part of Pakistan to be the victims of a new form of colonial exploitation in political, economic and cultural spheres, all planned and executed by a handful of West Pakistani power-hungry generals, greedy capitalists and feudal lords, and their collaborating bureaucrats. 1948. Ignoring Bengali, a mother tongue of 56% of the total population, Muhammad Ali Jinnah suddenly declared Urdu, a language of the ruling elite, as the only state language of Pakistan. The people and the students of Dhaka promptly protested. The demonstrators were immediately branded at his state elements and held in prison without trial. 1949, hundreds of peasants were massacred in Khulna, Jessore and Maiman Singh. 1950, a large number of detained patriots were murdered in various prisons. Soon it was 1951. Bengalis fumed against a conspiracy that aimed at curbing their democratic rights, as was revealed in the Basic Principles Committee report for the future constitution of Pakistan. A bloody climax was reached on 21st February 1952. To preserve the honor of their mother tongue, Bengali youths laid down their lives. Barkat, Salam, Jabbar, Shafiq and many others became the martyrs of the great state language movement. The place where they were struck down with bullets beneath these eucalyptus trees has become a place of national congregation. Every year on this day, hundreds of thousands of Bengalis gather to pay homage to Martyr's memory. It symbolizes the emergence of Bengali nationalism. 1953, Park American military pact was signed. By this, the ruling clique virtually sold out the sovereignty of the country. Massive demonstrations followed in protest. Prisons swelled once again. 1954. Under the leadership of Hussein Shahid Suharwardi, A.K. Fazlul Haq and Maulana Vashani, an electoral alliance was formed to fight for autonomy. 
the United Front staged a historic rout of the ruling party, the Muslim League. This terrified the ruling Atta. The popular government was quickly dislodged and a direct colonial rule was imposed. Hundreds of political leaders and workers were arrested and thrown behind the bars. The political, economic and cultural exploitation of the Bengalis continued unabated. 1958. In order to safeguard the interests of West Pakistani capitalists and industrialists, martial law was proclaimed. General Ayub Khan captured power. This time, not in hundreds, but in thousands, politically conscious Bengalis were arrested and held without trial. Repression, persecution and victimization continued. But people's anger could not be stopped. In 1962, huge demonstrations by a United Students community confronted Ayub's guns, demanding democratic constitution and education. Blood flowed once again. Bengali hearts were ripped open once again. In 1964, the ruling Janta sought to sabotage the people's movement by inciting a communal riot. But the Bengalis, paying again a high price in terms of blood, frustrated the evil design. In desperation, the Janta engineered a war against India in 1965. But the economic burden of this unjust war had to be borne by the Bengalis. 1966, Six Points Program, a charter of Bengali self-rule, was presented to the nation by Sheikh Mujibur Rahman. This was a turning point in our history. The Charter received unequivocal popular support. Ayub regime retaliated with vicious repression. Blood flowed again, Bengali blood. In 1968, hoping to suppress the rising tide of Bengali nationalism, Sheikh Mujibur Rahman and others were framed in so-called Agatala conspiracy case. 1969, Against the decade-long tyrannical dictatorship of Ayub Khan, the entire Bengali people exploded in anger. No blood flowed, but the unique, unarmed uprising that defied curfew and military might forced the dictator to withdraw the conspiracy case and free Sheikh Mujibur Rahman. But anti-people conspiracy continued behind the scenes. Ayub handed over power to a fellow general and martial law was proclaimed for the second time. Being afraid of popular wrath, General Yahya promised elections and transfer of power to the elected representatives of the people. In the general elections of December 1970, Sheikh Mujibur Rahman and his party, the Awami League, created electoral history. They captured 167 out of 169 National Assembly seats from the East and became the single majority party in the whole assembly. And Sheikh Jubal Rahman established himself as the unchallenged leader of the Bengalis. A praise that he truly deserved by virtue of his great sacrifices throughout his long eventful political career. Born in 1919, Sheikh Mujibur Rahman took active interest in politics from his school days and quickly earned reputation as a brilliant orator and organizer. A political disciple of Hussein Shahid Suharwardi and Maulana Vashani, he was among those very first who stood up against West Pakistani ruling cliques, oppression and tyranny. In 1949, he was one of the founders of the Awami League and became its general secretary in 1952. He made great contributions toward the formation of the United Front in 1954 and became the youngest member of the victorious United Front Cabinet. In 1966, he was elected the president of the Awami League. In June the same year, he presented the historic Six Points Charter and became a symbol of Bengali nation's hopes and aspirations. Throughout his political career, he has displayed unflinching courage, grim determination and extraordinary moral power. Until 1971, in his 23-year-old post-partition political career, he spent, off and on, more than 10 years in prison, where on more than one occasion, he had to suffer mental and physical torture. Yet, not even for a moment, 
the darkly power could force him into compromising the nation's legitimate interests. As a reward for this great sacrifice, the nation honored him with the title of Bangabundu, the friend of Bengal. Affectionate to his political workers, amiable to political adversaries, and hospitable to all, Bangabundu easily became the sole unifying factor in Bengali nation's struggle for emancipation. But the ruling junta never had any intention of transferring power. On 1st of March 1971, Yahya suddenly postponed the National Assembly session scheduled to commence two days later for an indefinite period. Shocked and frustrated, the people roared in anger. Bangabandhu Sheikh Mujibur Rahman called for a non-violent, non-cooperation movement. The entire population rallied behind him as one. The army opened fire indiscriminately. A lot of blood flowed once again. Riding over the corpses arrived 25th of March 1971. In the darkness of the night, Yahya let loose his barbarous army against the unarmed innocent people. One of history's grisliest mass murders began. Within a few weeks, more than a million Bengalis were butchered. But this time, Bengalis refused to be the victims of an one-sided murder campaign. Bullets could only be replied by bullets. They took to armed resistance. The invaders arrested Sheikh Mujibur Rahman. The helpsmanship fell on his close associate, Sayyid Nazrul Islam. Born in 1925, Mr. Islam has always proved to be the man during the hour of crisis. A lawyer by profession, he became an active member of the Awami League in 1951. Through sheer hard work, he fast moved toward party leadership. In 1957, he was elected a vice president of the Awami League, a post that he still retains. During the critical period between 1966 and 1969, when Sheikh Mujib was in prison, Sayyid Nazrul Islam led the party with great courage and political conviction. He was also elected Sheikh's deputy in the Awami League Parliamentary Party. On April the 10th, 1971, he proclaimed the independence of Bangladesh. On April 17, in Mujib Nagar, he formally declared the formation of the government of the People's Republic of Bangladesh in presence of national and international press. Bangabandhu Sheikh Mujibur Rahman, the President of the Republic, Sayyid Nazrul Islam, the Vice President and Acting President, Mr. Tajuddin Ahmad, the Prime Minister, a close comrade of Sheikh Mujibur Rahman, his political career spans over 27 years. A brilliant student of economics and law, Mr. Ahmed has been with the Awami League right from its inception. Like the leader, he too spent many years in prison. After holding important posts in the party since 1955, he was elected the General Secretary in 1966. Khundokar Mushtaq Ahmed, the Foreign Minister. He entered politics in 1942 and spent nearly seven years in prison for taking part in various political movements. An eminent member of Dhaka High Court and the Supreme Court, he was one of the founder joint secretaries of the Awami League. Presently, he is one of the three vice presidents of the party. Mr. Mansoor Ali, the finance minister. Born in 1918, Mr. Ali began his career as an eminent lawyer. During Ayub dictatorship, he was arrested thrice and spent a long period in the prisons. He is also one of the vice presidents of the Awami League, Mr. Kamruz Zaman, the Home Minister. Born in 1926, Mr. Zaman's political career dates back to 1945. He joined the Awami League in 1956 and took active part in anti-Ayub movement. He was twice elected the General Secretary of All Pakistan Awami League. The Declaration of Independence and the Government of Bangladesh received fullest support of the octogenarian political leader Maulana Abdul Hamid Khan Vashani. Full support also came from Professor Muzaffar Ahmed, President of the Bangladesh National Awami Party and Mr. Moni Singh, the leader of Bangladesh Communist Party. 
But after Bangladesh is freed from the colonial yoke, what will be the future framework of the Republic? I asked the acting president. In reply, he said, Independence sovereign Bangladesh is going to be a secular democratic state in which Hindus, Muslims, Buddhists, and Christians will enjoy equal rights as citizens and they will form their own government and make their own destiny. The independent Bangladesh will have a socialist pattern of economy where exploitation between men and men will be removed. Independent Bangladesh will be a peace-loving nation believing in peaceful coexistence with all its neighbors and will make its efforts for the establishment of world peace. How do you propose to solve the stupendous problem of national reconstruction after Bangladesh is completely free? I asked the Prime Minister. This will indeed be a big task. But when the country is free, the people will wholeheartedly apply themselves to the task of reconstruction. Since our economy is largely agricultural, it will continue to be viable in spite of the damage it has suffered in the industrial sector. Development activities in free Bangladesh will be guided by the principle of the widest distribution of cost and benefit in the community. Due priority will be given to agriculture and the industrial sector will be developed to serve the needs of our economy. A just proportion between urban and rural development shall also be our aim. We shall make best use of our resources, including our vast manufacturing. The energies of the committed people who believe in their destiny can work well. What will be Bangladesh's foreign policy? The foreign minister replied. Friendship towards all and milice towards none is the keynote of the foreign policy of the government of Bangladesh. End of political subjugation, economic exploitation and cultural invasion is the objective of the foreign policy. Bangladesh believes in peaceful coexistence and on the basis of mutual understanding by the process of dialogue. Bangladesh is opposed to imperialism and new imperialism, colonialism and new colonialism and all other extraneous forces having their sinister influence on the smaller countries. Bangladesh stands for and will persistently work for world and regional peace, for the unhindered development of human civilization and prosperity. What will be the economic structure? In reply, the finance minister said, In this connection, I would refer you to the manifesto of the Omelette. A socialistic world of economy, free from all kinds of exploitation, is doubtless the goal of independent Bangladesh. A pattern uh, that will do away with the disparity of income between men and men. A system that will ensure equitable distribution of national wealth amongst the uh, citizens of the state. An economy uh, that will enable every citizen of this state to enjoy the fruits of independence in fullest measure. What about the fundamental rights? The Home Minister had this to say. I can assure everyone in the world that fundamental human rights, freedom of pro, freedom of speech, freedom of association in a free democratic and secular independent Bangladesh shall be guaranteed to each citizen. For the last 20 years, the Bengalis have been fighting for these fundamental rights and freedom. We are against detention without trial. 
there will be no political victimization. The rule of law will prevail. Yes, no more bloodshed, no more tyranny. No more shall there be any injustice and oppression to build a happy, prosperous nation, to win a social order free from exploitation. We fight, we die, we live.